Just a few more runs, and these have shredded themselves. Why did they shred themselves? Last time you weren't so successful in shredding these humans. Hopefully today, luck is gonna be on our side. Let's see what the next level has in store for us. Okay, now I'm not sure about this. Should I go in order? Or since we've done a Seek and Destroy 1, do Seek and Destroy 2? I'm just gonna go in order, why not? Seek and Destroy 2 is gonna be way too difficult anyway. Okay, this is a nice start. What's 4 plus 2? I should know that. 1 times 3. How is anyone supposed to? Yeah, exactly. How should we know? We're no scientists. That's we've got calculators. That's right. Oh, a new command. Yes, sir. <laughs> this game is just so incredible. I couldn't think of all of these commands that get added with each level. So the task is simple. Pick up the cube under each worker. Calculate what the value of their current item plus one is, then write that result of the calculation on that cube and set it back down again. So everyone should pick up their cube, calculate, oh that's a nice animation, calculate it, put it back and there we go, four commands in three seconds, lovely. Now let's do Seek and Destroy 2. Last time in Seek and Destroy 1 we would tell each worker to find the minimum in their column and shred that number. This time we want to shred all the numbers, however we need to do it in order, from lowest to highest. No idea where to start, so I would say just do what we've done last time. And now I've noticed this pro tip from management, copy and paste your previous solution from the previous room as a starting point. Can I truly copy it from a different level? Let's see. So this was seek and destroy one. Our solution is still here. So we're gonna copy and just paste it in this room. Wow, it worked. <laughs> All right. The dumb way to solve this would be to just go up all the way to the wall, find the lowest number, shred it and repeat. So let's just try doing that. Here the global minimum, this variable, gets set to the largest possible value. We go through all the values and if we find a smaller one, we save it into this variable. And once we hit a wall, we pick up the smallest number and shred it. This technically only needs to happen once. So remember, remember the nearest shredder. And once we give the smallest number to the shredder, what we should do is jump straight back. Yeah, that already happens, so this code should work beautifully. I'm just afraid it's gonna take a lot of time. So let's speed this up. They should all just go through all the numbers. <laughs> wow, so they are dead. I've succeeded where I couldn't succeed last time. And I shredded them. <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, why did that happen? We found the global minimum and we weren't able to do it again because there's nothing lower than the absolute minimum. So once we give to the shredder, we need to set this to 99 again. So we either put a jump here all the way back to here or we just reset it. I would say the jump is probably a little cleaner like that. Was there an update or something? Now the jump arrows change colors. Never noticed that. Anyway, we give it to the shredder and jump back here. So we set the number of the global minimum to the max again. Let's try again, speed it up as per usual. And yep, they didn't shred themselves this time. Just a few more runs and these have shredded themselves. Why did they shred themselves? Oh wait, I see we've got 99s in there, so this doesn't work. So let's say if uh, the number you are standing on is smaller or equal to our global minimum, then reset it, which means not just you remember the value, but most importantly, they remember the position of that smallest data cube. Let's try again. Yeah, 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 working. And that's it. All right, we've done it. 10 commands. Lovely. Lovely. 
so already the fewest possible commands we could use. What we need to do now is shave off 6 measly seconds. Now the idea would be to simply run it again, right? Or maybe do another step without this checking. So at the start we always need to do a single step. So this line is empty, so now we take a step up and only then we start the loop. So another step up and here we need to check the value of those two cubes. And then in the end, once we jump, we jump all the way to here, reset the value and again take the step. This might do six seconds since it's about, let's say, seven passes all the way to the wall and back. Now let's see if that actually helped. Yes! 144 seconds. That's lovely. I'm really enjoying these levels. Honestly, at this point, I feel like I could do literally anything. I'm really pleased with myself. That being said, this is gonna be an insane level. So I think I'm gonna leave it here for today. But hopefully next time I'm not gonna get discouraged if I don't succeed straight away.